today we're out here and I'm talking to you guys about the snowshoe companies that were formed in New England during the French and Indian War. So basically what the snowshoe companies were, I'm going to try and make this quick and run out of daylight here. Basically what the snow snowshoe companies were was units of the best woodsmen of New England at that time. You know, people that knew wilderness survival skills, people that could hunt, people good shooters. The people, the men who could perform the best in these kind of conditions whenever asked. And the snowshoe companies were formed of these men to help protect New England frontier settlements from hostile Indian tribes. Because at, by this time, 1750s, 1760s, it had become a really big problem. And, you know, different Indian tribes were attacking for different reasons, and eventually they just said enough is enough. So they, snow, they formed the snowshoe companies. And that's what I'm dressed in the attire right now of someone who would have been in the snowshoe company. Um, there's no real rhyme or reason about what kind of clothing or gear. It was all things, it was all items made from whatever they had on hand, wherever they were, on the frontier, in the woods, wherever. And they were crudely made. They were made after the styles that were, of course, around at the time. But they weren't going after fashion, per se. They were going after, you know, it, would be, it was to be practical. It would be useful. You know, like this coat, it's made in the style, a um, mix between cuffs more being uh, 18th century and the buttons going down the whole frock here of more early 18th century, late 17th century. But this is made of nice thick wool and this would have been a winter garment and I usually would have gloves on right here but I just got out um, and you know pockets. Uh, linen breeches or wool breeches would have been common with wool knee leggings with mink interior and you might not be able to see that from here mink on the inside um, and that keeps your legs nice and warm and since they come to the knee they help protect against brush and things in, in an environment like this um, shoes would have been either the classic buckle shoes of the time but those usually weren't very practical normally they would be moccasins uh, winterized moccasins with fur interiors and then of course thinner moccasins for summer because snowshoe companies did scouts around settlements year-round. Spring, summer, fall, winter. So they had to have all kinds of garments to accompany them on these scouts which could last days, sometimes even a month or so. Um, and in terms of gear, uh, we have a ball bag which can carry of course your ball and shot for your musket which I also don't have with me out here as well as snowshoes which they also would have had but if you really want to see what the snowshoes look like, you can look up, you know, New England Indian snowshoes or Abenaki snowshoes of the 17th century or 16th uh, or 18th century, and you'll get an idea of what these units would have had. But ball bag to carry, you know, um, your bullets, as you might call them, but they're musket balls. Powder horn to carry your black powder to fire the rifle or musket. Uh, a knife, which these units were equipped with muskets and bladed weapons because um, they were using Indian tactics against the Indians. So if you ran out of shot, you could get up close with a knife, or I have here a, uh, a hatchet. And both tools are useful for far more than just uh, killing there for practical use in survival, which I'm going to show you a couple of ways, a couple survival techniques that these guys would have needed to know how to do them in order to survive out on scouts. It's a hatchet there, and a little leather case. And these are all on my little belt here. I have a side pouch with miscellaneous things, a canteen, which is just um, stoneware, uh, red clay. Uh, pot with a leather cover on it and a linen strap. Uh, sometimes it'd be gourds, tin, that kind of thing. Buckle bag, leather, carry extra gloves, hats, that kind of thing. A couple squirrel tails under there. Um, 
snap sack, linen to carry your blanket, uh, furs, that kind of thing to help keep you warm in the winter. Hat, which is a broad brim hat, useful during the daytime. Usually at night I'd wear uh, a wool knit cap, which I'm going to be putting on in a bit here because it's getting cold. Um, and that's pretty much the equipment. Uh, well, and also I have a linen shirt and west kit under the coat. But that's pretty much for equipment. I'm going to go out and we're going to show you some survival techniques such as shelter building and fire making. Change that. We might not get to shelter building today, just in terms of light, but I will show you fire making. So, see you in a bit. Alright, so I've kind of settled in this spot. I like the spot. Got some good tree coverage. Uh, good, good, fairly good spot to bed down for the night. Um, or where we would bed down. So, I'm going to offload my gear now and we'll see if we can get a fire going. Got a tinder here. We'll go get some burning wood, some fuel wood. burnable stuff. Sure, we got a battery here. Let's see how quickly we can make this happen. Uh, we got char cloth that has been made. We got your char cloth. Not authentic uh, flint and steel here. They would have had actual piece of flint and steel, but a fair and rod. Uh, does the same basic idea. Actually, wide. Not ready. We got some uh, nice tinder in here, which I save. So this will be good. We got our little nest. All right. We got all this. kind of want to put that right in there. Make a nice you know, little nest, like I said. Alright, poke a hole in there. Got our piece of, piece of char cloth. Get it on something here. Get your knife or a piece of steel or whatever. We make fire. The idea is to get a spark on the char cloth. That's the hard thing here. Wait, I have something. Put this in here. Got the char cloth lit. Kind of take care of it here. It's the only thing. Come on. <coughs> <coughs> All right, so, isn't that a bad there? I couldn't 
get the camera, but I got it going just so you see. And you gotta keep blowing on it. I don't know how much longer this camera's gonna last here. But just, you know, once you get it a little flame going, you can just build it up. As any good fire does. Fire right, fire, it's so like getting ready to pack up here. Um, I can come right. back up. Sorry guys, as I was trying to say out there, but I couldn't because my camera kept running out of battery. Very sorry about that. Make sure it doesn't happen again because that would be really annoying to me if I was watching a YouTube video. So, as I was saying, that's just one technique, you know, that these guys have had to know in order to survive out in the wilderness on these scouts for long periods of time. Um, I'll likely do other videos about this stuff because I really... This one did not go as I had hoped it would. So I'll definitely do more of them. Um, thanks for watching.